Hello, folks, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, A. Joe Chua Love, here with the AEW Collision Review for August 12th, 2023 edition. As last night, we got... wasn't confirmed yet, but I gather we're going to get Mojo for CM Punk at All In. You know, we had a very good segment with Ricky Starks. The main event was fun. Trios match with Alice Black and CMFTR. Pretty much the stare down and exchange alone from CM Punk and Malachi Black pretty much made that match. As we're inching closer and closer to Wembley and all in on the 27th in two weeks. But last, thank you for joining me. Um, Not much really to go over Uh, before the review. Of course, you know, if you guys are new, click that like and subscribe. Uh, Especially if you're new. Subscribe, find all the videos on the channel, notification bell, get that up, and yep, first, let's get into it. So, AEW Collision was a good show in which we had. So, Ricky Starks, I mentioned, he started the show. So, it was... Tony Schiavone was in the ring, and he introduced Ricky Starks. And Starks was out there, you know, looked perplectic about... The events that happened last week because Tony Schiavone announced that due to Stark's attack post match last week against CM Punk on excuse me looking for my notes again, but due to the attack last week on Ricky Steamboat. Sarks has been suspended from wrestling in AEW for 30 days. Which I which already could say puts damper, you know. I can tell some put a damper on some because you know unfortunately according to this he won't be wrestling at Wembley. Now Here's the weird thing. You know, it's like, yes, would like Starks to be wrestling at Wembley, but at the same time, in this being AW's biggest show, you don't want just everybody on the card for the sake of having them on the card. That's the tricky part. Plus, you have All Out just a week later. So, there's a risk factor that goes in this. And at the same time, according to 30 days, probably won't be able to be at All Out. So, there you go. So, Sarks was out there and says he loves Ricky, but he did what he had to do um, for costing him the a the real world championship last week. Said that despite him being held down for a month. 
that it won't stop him because he applied for a manager's license. So, so I'll get to hear and see him next week. So, or for the next 30 days. So, yeah. So, he issued an offer to Punk for next week, saying next week he'll be in his backyard and basically made a challenge to Punk. Um, you know, saying that no one's like him because he's absolute and he is the face of the collision. So, pretty much, you know, Sarks is obviously disappointing how, you know, he was over as a baby face, but his momentum was dimmed down, but, you know, Got including the own Heart Cup tournament, won it over Punk. You know, beat Darby. Obviously, the loss last week in a good match between the two, but alas, you know, Starks is legit and they're doing something, it seems. They're trying to do something to. Because we know how damn good Ricky Sarks is. And here's what I bet. You know, people complain about, you know, now that there's a real world tile, that, you know, there's basically a second world tile. In AEW for now. But. When you consider the fact that MJF. Is likely. Now. Who knows what happens at Wembley. uh, With this whole storyline. When MJF found called the kingdom. But. You know, MJF is likely not going to lose the title till 2024. And that has put a bit of a cripple or a crutch on some of the some of the stars of AEW because the last, you know, If they are to challenge MJF, they're more than likely going to lose. So, you know, it's nice to be able to punk. You know, it's a way to give them more traction and collision. And Ricky Starks has certainly been one of those guys that have benefited from this short brand split with collision. Same with the gun club. Bullet Club, you know, Miro, Andrade, Austin Black, etc. So we'll see. So our first match on the show, we had the claimed versus... Seems no longer called Bear Country. But Iron Savages. Thus is their name. Um, is what it is. Um, nonetheless. This match was alright. You know. It was a way to give. He claimed on show and, you know, it 
It is, first of all, it is good that the acclaimed are back in the tag team division. Certainly, first and foremost, because the tag team division could certainly use teams and depth. So there's that. But match was all right here, and I bet. This whole Billy Gunn thing is going to come to fruition somehow. So. The Iron Savages hit like a double spine buster for a near fall. I believe it was Bronson who gave a big press to cast her in the air. So. They went for this big splash where I believe Bronson was on Boulder's shoulders like an electric chair position and he was going to hop off for a splash. But. Bowen's got the tag in. To. Yeah so. Caster got the tag. He did a springboard drop kick. Knocking. Bronson off boulder shoulders. Like an electric chair. Type of deal. So, that was nice. And then, the acclaimed hit stereo famousers slash guitar crushers on the Savages for the win. Homage to Billy Gunn. And they got the win. And said they'll be on Dynamites on Wednesday. So, there you go. Next, Bull Club Gold. Probably the best part of Collision. Bullet Club Gold, they were backstage with Lexi Nair and Jay White said that, you know, Lexi looks different than Shawani and, you know, said some things and the Gun Club. Or actually, as Jay White talked about, well, some say they're the best brother tag team in the world, and that's reserved for the guns in the Bang Bang Gang. So, the guns, Austin and Colton, offer a challenge to the Young Bucks for Wednesday on Dynamite. Saying don't bring super kicks to a gunfight. Because guns up. Are we at it? Got the Young Bucks first the guns on Wednesday. Should be a good match. You know. I'd like to see the guns, you know. Really, anyone but Juice has been the only one really taking the falls for 
or losses for Bullet Club Gold so far, but, you know, they got momentum. They're probably the hottest they've been since even winning the tag team titles. Just, you know, the four together in Big Star hilarious and yeah that should be good on Wednesday how far they've come in the last two years it's great great to see the maturity and the growth we've seen out of Austin Colton just in these two years have been very sweet to see. And it's funny. They're facing the Bucks who are facing FTR at Wembley. You know that the guns and FTR have history. And curious to see. If they run that back for <laughs> another day. If FTR retains. So next we have Will Nightingale and Chris Salander versus Mercedes Martinez and Diamante. This unfolded last week after Chris beat Mercedes for the TBS title. And Diamante helped in a post-match attack on Chris. And well, it came for the save. So, then, this match is fine here. Um, we has dive to the outside by Diamante. Chris is spear. Uh, but, in the end, Mercedes rolled up Willow and... With help for leverage from Diamante, got the victory over Willow. So, there you go. And they got the victory. So, next week, we're going to get Willow for Diamante. Willow should probably get her win back in that bout. We'll see. I mean, they're generating or trying to a little bit of story with the women on collision. It's all we ask for in non tile feuds. That's why people have gotten upset the last couple weeks about with this Ufisto. Stuff coming out about the AEW Women's Locker Room. You know, I mean, as much as I'd like to say it's a coincidence, clearly, with the women being in the main event the last two weeks on Dynamite, something... Just can't be a big coincidence. So, you know, anyways, I like that they're trying with building story with the women on Saturdays. That's all you can ask for. Next, we had Tony Storm, who apparently has been channeling, 
I mean, I saw this on uh, social media. She apparently has been channeling her Marilyn Monroe type of gimmick. And, you know, it's hilarious how she's been, you know, Basically, you know, upset, you know, not happy, depressed over losing her title to Sheeta. But she's including this four-way match at All In with Sheeta and Soraya now, and presumably Britt Baker, you know, it's going to be a unique match, I'd say, but I've said enough, um, but yeah, should be a good match at Wembley. So then we got Samoa Joe for Sandra Everett. Once again, I put on the stopwatch. See how long this match would take. It was almost a minute and a half. Almost. But, you know, it's funny. With Samoa Joe, when he does that walking away spot from his opponents that do a f- do a springboard attack or a dive, and they miss, and he just walks away. Usually they fall flat, or they end up missing. Effort here, he landed on his feet, rolled through. And caught the eye of Joe, made him a little angry, so took Everett's head off with a lariat, walked in the rain and could choke, and that was it. And yeah, Small Joe gets another victory. Afterwards, Joe got on the mic. Talked about how it's been a week and he's left with no answer for Wembley. How he gave him the courtesy punk, CM Punk, and asking for a match at Wembley. Saying that's saying like Batista in that famous. You could say infamous promo with Triple H before WrestleMania 35 when he said, give me what I want. And Smojo was like, give me what I want. Give these fans what they want. And said that Punk is being a coward. But finally said, well, since I'm done asking about Brad at Wembley, he's going to convince him. And then walked away. So right away, I, I mean, I c- kind of figured with the promo from last week, but now, after this, I was like, okay, Samoa Joe is going to do something across Seal Punk and FTR, you know, the Trio Styles main event, and kind of figured, and I was like, yeah, yep, Christian Cage 
Luchasaurus, they were out there. It's Dean T. Tile. Christian talked about Darby saying he's wrapped up um, in his ways for Wembley. Said that he's among the people that are better than the second best people from Greensboro um, here in the city. Talked about Michael Jordan. Said that the greatest of all time is not him. It's LeBron James. Talked about Ric Flair. And said that everyone knows I'm better than Ric Flair. Everybody else that's from this area. So... While he's rallying on Arn Anderson and Brock Anderson and his son, they come out, no music, and kind of figure where this is going. So, Christian talked about where he's been, you know. That the most relevant he's been in the last 15 years is when they busted him up and that stairway come on ago saying, what happened to you? And saying he doesn't want a match, but if you want to step in, be your guest. So... Arn was like, if this was 20 years ago, I'd be getting their spawn much your ass and take that title. But Arn was like, you didn't think we'd forget, did you? So then, Rock got in the ring, and I'm guessing it was impromptu. I heard before the break that... Lucha's horse was going to be in action as well. So, perhaps this is just what they were going for. Um, but we got Arn and, or Brock Anderson for Lucha's horse. Apparently, for the TNT title. So, my match here. Um, There was a strange spot. So, where apparently Brock sandbagged Luchasaurus. Not sure if Luchasaurus is going for a throw or suplex or whatever, but yeah, the way it looked, Brock. Miscommunication just can't, didn't get up properly. Made the dinosaur angry. So, Luchasaurus hit a choke slam on Brock and Larry it to the back of Brock's head for the win. So, Luchasaurus or Christian Cage, whichever retains. Afterwards, Darby Allen came out for save on Brock. And Christian and Luchasaurus fled. And Darby asked for a match with the de facto TNT champion Christian Cage for next week. And we got that Christian for a story. 
So yeah, it seems like we're gonna get Darby versus Luchasaurus at All Out. There we go. But curious how this match is gonna go since Christian claims to be the de facto champion. We'll see. But yeah, Darby has that coffin match at All In. So, Darby can't afford to be looking out of place before Wembley. Next up, Powerhouse Hobbs. He is out there with the goal that Harold Cameron and QT Marshall, who, by the way, apparently won the AAA Latin Championship in AAA. Uh, today, so good for him. Um, by being Penta and someone else, so Hobbs was out there with the chains. Tony Schwartz was like, I tried to. Every last week, but Harley and Marshall interrupted him, uh, offered some gifts, in which you walked away from. And Hobbs, like, how's the gold? He's like, Look, looks good. Tony sh- said, so, he said he, has, he had to go back to the bay and get the one thing that he allows him to inflict more violence after violence after violence that he cares about. And he said that is the Book of Hobbes. Something we haven't seen in a while. So re-emerging the Book of Hobbes after abandoning it for weeks. So Hobbes was like, the next chapter in here is called Redemption. Saying that he doesn't need anybody's help and he doesn't want anybody's help. But it seems like someone's always in the way. You know, when he lost the Teen Championship, when he lost the Owen Hart Tournament, says, how can he redeem himself or get back to where he was? He said in order to get back to this get past this chapter, he has to call out the Redeemer, so he called out Miro, and, already people are like, jeez, because, collision, yeah, excuse me, a collision is building, unintended, so Miro, Made his way out. Stared down at Hobbs. But. Towards the ramp. He got blindsided by Nick Camarado. And Aaron Solo of. The factory. And. They all were in the ring. Miro took care of. Of both the right 
as he turned around, a big spine monster by Hobbs laid out Miro, placed the book of Hobbs on Miro's chest and left. It's a fun, it's a fun, fun collision right there. Two of the biggest guys. It's going to be a war of attrition. Now, the problem is, with how you book Miro, it's almost as unbeatable. But Hobbs, we could say, needs momentum. So how do they... It's going to be tough. I'm guessing from how Hobbs talked about All Out. This is going to be a match for All Out. But how... I mean... It's going to be fun. But... Unique how they go about this, certainly to say. Next up, main event. House of Black. Malachi Black. Bunny Matthews. Brody King. For CMFTR. For the AEW Trios Championships. So. For a while, there was good exchange. Um, so. But. This match really started to pick up when, you know, Black and Punk were in the ring. You can feel the energy in that room. They went to exchange strikes and then, um, well, Punk went for the GTS, Black went for a Black Mass. Punk out of the way and sat in front of Black and were across from each other with their partners standing right beside them. Then it just became a big melee in the metal ring, um, which is fun to see. So, Dax was isolated for a good portion during the commercial break. He got a DT for separation, got the hot tag to Punk. <laughs> Punk then followed up with DT by his own for a near fall. He hit the GTS to Buddy, but Buddy got out of the ring. FTR hit dies to the outside. They have big bulldog by Cash to Brody for near fall. They had a good spot here. FTR hit double superplex to Brody King. But Punk followed up with a top rope elbow for a near fall. It took a while, but all three of them got Brody up for the Shatter Machine. Uh, but Black and Buddy put a stop to that. So it was melee again. Buddy hit a Meteora off top. Followed a brain buster from Dax. Malachi hit a big knee. Took down Dax. And then. Punk 
and black hit Serio. Round ass kicks, taking them both down. And then finish came. So Punk was on the outside. And Small Joe was in the crowd. Joe took him over the barricade and choked him out away from the referee. And from out of nowhere, Brody King hit a big lariat, and that was enough for the win. House Black retained in this fun main event. There we go. Right outcome, you know, as expected, Small Joe was going to have a hand in this match, certainly. Um, yeah, I was good. Um, so I imagine CM Punk will respond some way next week. These are on Dynamite or Collision. Um, next week, all next week, um, Dynamite. Rampage and Collision will be Fight for the Fallen. And Tony Khan said all the proceeds will go to the Maui Food Bank. So, cool is there. Um, but yeah. Closer to Wembley. Um, so, Dynamite should be a good show. Um, find out what Kenny's going to do for Wembley. Next week, CM Punk probably responds to Joe. And Wembley's certainly shaking up. It should be fun. But uh, we'll see. Anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoy this um, as well. Click the like, leave thumbs up. Guys, help out the video, please, and channel. But there you go. Also, subscribe over there in the corner. Hey, guys. Be safe. See you guys next time. Peace.